Yeah, if he's comfortable. <laughs> so welcome back guys to my YouTube channel. This is Owen and I'm back with another YouTube video. So I'm doing something similar to the previous video, answering Q&A. But I got a special guest today with me on my channel. Um, this man has been through the most and is one of the most successful people I know personally in my life. And uh, we're going to be doing a Q&A. Basically, I'm going to be asking him a few questions. And I hope you guys get inspired. So he's going to introduce himself. And he's gonna talk a little bit about himself and we'll get into the video and to the questions stay tuned guys you'll be very um, entertained by this one so gabriel introduce yourself to the guest yeah i'm gabriel wakalenda from Eparela, Eparela is in between wakana and otaku in the northern part of Namibia. Uh, that is on the southern region i'm actually a farmer by default and a youth leader and my profession i'm a growing expert um, and i have converted my profession into being a logistician and as well as a procurement officer and uh, thank you thank you um i didn't want to include this eh? but a lot of people do not know gabriel um, gabriel has a very interesting story um, if you look in hindsight his achievements and all that he has done very well and i'm sure he's gonna be an inspiration i don't know if you feel comfortable sharing just a short not too long just short story and all your achievements and what you are now what you used to be before and what you are now where you are and yeah all that's um, actually yeah as i said i'm a, a brewing expert so i I studied in Germany, uh, brewing and marketing technology at Ferdinand Adam Washington. <laughs> at Ferdinand Adam uh, uh, Ferdinand Van Stein Schule in Germany. So upon my arrival in Windhoek, so I went to work with there. And yeah, on um, uh, that was 20, 2013. Uh, in August, first August, I started working as a brewing expert in mid February. Uh, yeah, then I moved to August. I had an accident, I was working high accident. I was coming from the coast 20 kilometers to Kahanja. I had an accident, so I went through uh, rehabilitation at Parama and then later on at Central Hospital, that is Spinalis Center, mm -hmm. where I was rehabilitated again because I sustained a spinal cord injury at the, the C5 level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I, I was privileged to be rehabilitated by experts from Sweden, a, a team of around about eight people, whereby they are, there are some um, neurologists, urologists, and all those are. Neurosurgeons, uh, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, yeah. Yeah, so 2015, I went back at my uh, village where I went to do some farming there and also to build my house as, a, as, a, as an achiever. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, I passed through a lot, but then later on, 2018, I went back to school again. Uh, at NAST, Namibia University of Science and Technology, where I did Bachelor of Logistics and Supply mm -hmm. Chain Management for three years, and I found myself again in the industry. So right now, yes, I'm, a, I'm a procurement officer due to my qualifications that I obtained at mm -hmm. Namibia University of Science and Technology. Thank you. Okay, that's just a highlight of his life. Um, but Gabriel, uh, you mentioned something, and I want to get into detail. Um, if you guys are watching you are seeing somebody you probably never you you don't meet people like this on a daily basis you meet people like this once in a lifetime i'm talking about uh, i i'm saying that because he has done many outstanding uh, things that a lot of people wouldn't do regular people wouldn't do and uh, looking from what had happened to him or what he had gone through many few uh, very few people can bounce back and have a normal life and achieve what he has achieved it's very hard to do that um and i just want to ask gabriel maybe there are people because i know a couple of people also who had went through his situation but they never revived or they never bounced back 
to life and they never uh, went on to do amazing things so Gabriel like in your state of mind after the accident happened like how how did you feel how did you how did you manage to get yourself back together because a lot of people just think that you just have like when you are not living in the person's life you don't understand what um, he goes to on a day day to day basis um, there are a lot of challenges but um, what kept you going or what made you um, 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 how did you convince yourself into thinking that okay I can do these amazing things I can still go back to school and I can still achieve these amazing things and although the condition is really really bad I was fa you were faced with a very terrible condition but you still managed to uh, get yourself together and uh, go out and achieve all these amazing things what were you going through in that moment how did you think you're gonna make it through um, please, you can share. Um, yeah. yeah, actually what happened is like uh, when I went back to, to the village, at my village, so I, I was, um, I, let me say I had given up in life, like mm -hmm. I, I regarded myself useless, but when I was at the village, I saw the, um, uh, some of the school dropouts and I encouraged them to go back to school. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so now with that, I, I happen to tell my story like, no, I, uh, how do I encourage them to go back to school? Let me do it myself. Let me go back to school. And then there I can be inspiration, like give example of how I, exp how um, myself experienced that uh, scenario. So yeah, at my village, that is where you find a lot of uh, youth that are unemployed some they they are just dropping out yeah so i have tried my level best to come up with two civil society organizations in the village one is for for the youth development uh, uh, group for for these young ones and the other one is for those people who are um, on ART and also TB treatment for them to to have something to do at least in agriculture yeah so from there I, I also met my other uh, colleagues so we established a, a tutorial center in Old Tati uh, whether we carried out first a research that in Omsati region there were no tutorial center private tutorial centers so for those learners who would like to improve their grade 10, 11 and 12, yeah, so we, we have registered that school and it was approved by the Minister of Education, uh, Minister Honorable Anangi Kwapaka. So they granted us the certificate of registration. So our first enrollment was 1,700 uh, students and then that yeah, is when wow. I, I was running that institution as a managing director and the chairperson of the board of directors of that institution. So it's still uh, under operation, it's still flourishing and also we have triggered um, more tutorial centers to come uh, in Omasati region. I think now they are around about 8 or 9 or 12 somewhere there. Yeah, so basically that that made me to tell the story as it is like to also to, to, to go back again. I was also, uh, I, I also went to what we call Young African Leadership in Initiative as in SADC that was um, in Pretoria in the University of South Africa where I have learned uh, more on leadership skills and also uh, youth uh, leadership and also joined uh, Conrad Adenwashti to Youth Empowerment where I have, uh, we had some sessions, workshops on how to deal with uh, youth leadership. Yeah, so basically that is, that's what it is. Thank you. Okay, that was great. Okay, uh, I'm sure you guys have gotten now an insight of who Gabriel is and what he does and the circumstances he had to go through to become the person he is um that is quite interesting gabriel so i'm gonna be asking you a few questions um that i got uh for you um hopefully these questions will also answer some of your um some of the people that follows you 
um, if you guys do not know, Gabriel has over half a million uh, views on TikTok uh, for his short clip that he had uploaded when he was graduating. So he was um, regarded as one of the most inspirational people at the graduation ceremony. So he's very, uh, uh, um, ins he has inspired basically quite a few individuals. Uh, people text him every day, people uh, um, give him compliments, people are very amazed at what he has done. He's a walking hero. Um, so talking about heroes, I'm going to ask you, Gabriel, who is your hero? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know I have been watching some of uh, young achievers, like there is one, one couple in the, uh, uh, in the US. Uh, that is um, Charisma and Co. So they really inspired me. Char Charisma and Co. is also uh, Co. is also a quadriplegia. If I've complete quadriplegia, of which it means that uh, he paralyzed from the chest downward the, the limbs. So yeah, he's also he also went to school and. Yeah, from the, that is when I also stood up like, no, I, I also need to do something uh, related to, to this guy. And yeah, he's, he's really doing well and he inspired me a lot. Uh, yeah, so that's where I found myself like, no, let me not be home. Let me do something profound, at least maybe somewhere, somehow, uh, actually in Africa, maybe, or in let me say internationally maybe i will inspire someone as well to be a role model of someone so yeah thank you for that okay question number two um if you could live anywhere where would you where would it be where would you live where would you want to live where would you want to have a family what place um do you really love yeah in the uh, whole world uh, as, as i said uh, i studied in germany yeah and yeah the german people treated me well and i didn't i, I mean that period when i was in germany so i didn't experience any racism and all all, all those um uh, all those discrimination i didn't experience that so i really enjoyed uh to be in germany and also people treated me well so i would like to say well, I would, I would like to live in Germany, so yeah. But you know, Africa is Africa, and we are here to stay. But if the opportunity comes, so I think Germany is good for me. Okay, great Germany. Germany, that's a place to stay. Um, for me, I think for me, I would want to stay in one of those Asian countries. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is. It's because I don't know. I think I love Asian people. Yeah, yeah and they have nice food also. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your biggest fear? Question number three. Yeah, my biggest fear is those those disasters. Mm. You know, you know, maybe like those who go kind of era from like the floods and you know i'm already like this man so oh i think, I think yeah those things they yeah. to power even war man <laughs> like to see people are running and here yeah, i'm trying my little best to, <laughs> to push my wheelchair so <laughs> that's my biggest fear yeah and but another thing is that um I have yeah. what we call acrophobia, so I'm scared. I'm scared of heights. Yeah. So I don't even when I was in the hospital, I was at the seventh level mm -hmm. on the seventh floor. So yo, uh, and I was uh, I was close to the window, mm -hmm. but they said that uh, <laughs> that fear can be uh, can be treated through uh, exposure, but I have failed. Yeah. I, I dismally failed in that regard. So fear to me is the biggest one. Yeah, like when you expose yourself to the fear, basically you get uh, to stop fearing it, or like yes. you become so used to it that it's no more um, something that you find uh, as fearful. Yes, yes. To you. Yeah. So that's great. Um, side note: um, for those that do not know, um, 
So my biggest fear is basically, I don't know, cluster. You have the fear of heights, I have a cluster, what do you call it? Clusterphobia. <laughs> yeah, I have a fear, clusterphobia. That's my biggest fear. Don't like being into very tiny spaces. Uh, very, like, I don't like being in places whereby I feel like I have to look for air. So breathing is very important to me, like, and movement. Um, yeah, that's my fear. I'm sure a lot of you have that fear. Apparently, according to the, how many people have? Let me find out. Yeah, what what is it called again? Clusterphobia. Oh. I want to find out how many people in the world have claustrophobia. Many. your favorite family vacation vacation yeah vacation. um you know i'm a family person like like i love my family and yeah. and you know i tried my level best to put my family together and yeah even i, I remember even when i was in germany so i i organized the meeting mm -hmm. my family like preparing for family reunion yeah but um I, um, I I just want at least to 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 I mean I like gathering my family and take them like to um, waterfall. My family uh, I don't mean like my wife and kids. I don't mm. have a wife yet, but yeah, yeah, I'm planning to be there. Yeah. So I mean my my siblings and my other. But, but are you um, single and ready to mingle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Maybe some body somewhere out yeah. there. Yeah, no, 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 no. Such a big man, I can't be. I, yeah, uh, um, let me say I'm not married, so like that means that I'm I'm single. But yeah, yeah I I can see uh, lights at the end of the tunnel. So I'm just busy putting things together. Then maybe I will also uh, disclose very soon yeah. what is next uh, in in terms of uh, family, like my my wife. But yeah. I will plan a, a potential husband and I, I can see a potential wife somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. Great. Um, there's one of uh, Gabriel's family members right now. Yeah. Uh, Sele, can you please go? <laughs> just come. Come into, just, okay, so that you guys can see the, re the resemblance. Now. And what, just to yeah. back up what Gabriel said, Gabriel is truly a family man. This guy really takes care of his family and this guy really loves his family. Yes, yes. And we've got, they kind of look the same. So you comment down below and tell me what you think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's uh, the brother. We just talk about family now and he is one of his relatives. So um, introduce yourself, maybe if you can. Yeah, so my name is uh, Wakalenda. Uh, I, let me say, my name is Celestina Wakalenda. Yeah. I'm a brother to Gabriel. Yeah. So I'm always with him. Yeah. We take care of each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so let me let me just let me just yeah. tell you guys it's about uh, Celestine. So, oh, yeah. yeah, Celestino actually is my younger brother. I think between me and him there are around about four. Four, yeah. So yeah, Celestino to me we are we are really cooperating and I go with him to work. So he's also pursuing uh his uh yeah, qualifications also in procurement so yeah he's also a business someone also a farmer i remember i handed over my my pig farming to him so he's running he's a farmer a, yes I'm a, a, farmer. a pig area so yeah ah he's he's quite good he's also doing you know, he's also a, an ambitious guy it's an ambitious businessman businessman yeah uh yeah so yeah, that's Seller, and yeah, we'll probably include him in another video one day and get into detail with him. Yeah, if he's comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys want to see Seller more, you can comment down below, and then yeah, we'll include him in the next video. He's quite very uh, entrepreneur, 
if you guys i think you might be a good the right person for entrepreneur advice yeah gabriel also is an entrepreneur not to say that <laughs> you're not no? and you are also but he's very young and he's doing that yeah and exactly for me i'm just like a popcorn <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the fourth, uh, what was the fourth question? So the fifth question is, um, what would you change about yourself if you could? What would you change about yourself if you could? Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, we are saying um, where there is life, there is hope. So I'm still hoping for the best. I'm still hoping that maybe. One of the good day, I will be a free man from the wheelchair. I believe in God. I believe in miracles. So yeah, I also believe that God uses people. Maybe he can use scientists, maybe to come up with some uh, uh, discoveries, maybe to how to regenerate the spinal cord uh, and the nerves, put, to put them together and back on my feet. So you know, I I pushed already like to a certain level when i'm like this how about if i'm completely restored back to my feet yeah but that will not stop me from achieving or from pursuing my 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 endeavors so i'm still pursuing i'm still pursuing my postgraduate diploma in project management uh running simultaneously again with my uh, mba again in management strategy so yeah so that will not stop me to achieve what i would like to achieve so and i uh, i just want to change as well as my uh, my my community i i have a lot to do in the community i'm still running um one civil society organization at the uh, at my community where i'm looking for them uh fundings and also uh and also other projects again how to expand their projects and and now i'm currently applying for for um for my community uh, a library yeah it's a small community actually but yeah uh, people there I, I mean i i want them to to achieve as well and also to encourage them as we are pursuing development in our society thank you oh. Great, that was great, that was great, that was great, it's wonderful. Guys, we're coming to the end of um, this video and I'm going to be asking one last question um, because I know Gabe was an individual, he loves his career, so I thought let me end the question with uh, a question that relates to his career. Um, so what is your favorite thing about your career, like what you're doing right now, like what's yes. the most favorite thing about it? Okay. Um, as I said, I'm now a procurement officer at Road Fund Administration. Um, yeah, so and I'm doing now my my MBA in management strategy. So actually, I have chosen like management strategy, which is a, a, a bit more complex, like more general, not not to be specific, because I, I cannot really see myself to be procurement officer uh, um, let me say the next five years so I need to grow I need to grow further again so yeah so um, yeah I, I I'm not here as like as I can say as a procurement officer I'm pushing again to the next level maybe management strategies well as I'm saying yeah, we left a school, uh, a tutorial center in the north. So, uh, so I also need to think strategically on how to lead the school there while I'm here uh, in the in Bindu, which is 800 kilometers away from me. So, okay. yeah. Okay, great. I think we've come to the end um, of this uh, short Q and A or interview slash um podcast whatever you want to call it um i want to end this on a side note huh? on a side, let me end this with a positive note um a lot of you out there um probably 
are struggling with something you have gone through something that is very difficult for you to go through and we have an example right here who has gone through something very difficult and he has managed to get out of it um, he didn't let anything his circumstances hold him back and you also yourself can do that i mean so at the end of this video i think i might include the video also just to uh, for context like to show you um, him moving around and then yeah maybe that will be good for context and then we're just gonna add some clips yeah different random clips yeah just for you to get the context of who he is and yeah his daily life so we've come to the end thank you guys subscribe like share and i'll see you next time bye cheers